I have played Mario Party 6 and I can say it is actually pretty fun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and as someone that's owned 7, that one's a pretty good one too. Both of them are like some of the only GameCube games to actually use the microphone that doesn't mm -hmm. work very well. But uh, I won't lie, some of, them, some of the microphone minigames are pretty fun to play. Especially the one versus three ones. Those ones are always a blast. <laughs> Wheel Decide says I should go back to Link. Wheel Decide is drunk off its ass, and I probably should stop using it. <laughs> At least this level doesn't involve too much platforming, if I'm remembering correctly. I didn't name the level, by the way. You will get retribution, whoever you are. I think it's Donut... I think it's just Donut Donut Hills or something. Something very vanilla to Mario World. I'm pretty sure I'm not the only person to say this, but I much prefer Mario 3 All-Stars Edition versus Mario World. Yeah, definitely. And I say All-Stars Edition because that is the definitive edition of the game. It's just yeah. Nintendo never releases that one, so... Yeah, Super Mario Advance no, 4... Has, has Super... Mario 3 even come to the Switch thing yet? I don't know. I think it... I'd be surprised if it hadn't. But you know, but, considering but, the Switch Online, they really don't have any reason not to put All-Stars on there when they get around to Super Nintendo games. Because at that you point, know, you could play either the Originals or the All-Stars version, and it doesn't matter because you're still paying the same $20 a month. You know, I don't, I don't kind of feel like I'm just going to have to pass on the you know, streaming service Nintendo's doing with the NES games. Because, like, I would rather not stream the games... Is it streamed, though? I thought it was just you select a game and then it downloads it. I'm... I believe I'd be extremely play... surprised if... Uh, Castlevania knockback! God damn it! I think it does download, but there's, like, a time limit based off of how long you have your subscription. And I'd, I'd rather have, like, a normal virtual <laughs> console, but we know that's not happening. Because I thought it worked basically like the Virtual Console did. You just had access to the whole library and you just could download... Okay, that was just terrible. No, I don't know how it works that I don't have the subscription myself. Yeah, Blaze yeah, Donut Road by Isriari. Is is Rieri? I am sorry. But yeah, from what I understand of it, it's not a terrible deal. Having access to the... To the... Wouldn't say entire NES library, because that's obviously false. Yeah. But having access to a good number of the better titles on it, just with, with your online subscription, is pretty nice. Yeah, definitely. And I'm definitely going to want to get that subscription service if I ever get Mario Maker 2, so... Like, that'll probably be my birthday gift to myself, is just Nintendo Switch Online plus Mario Maker 2. Yeah, I wonder what I'll get for my birthday. Probably nothing. <laughs> oh, a hidden leaf. Sweet. Although it does seem that I can rely on at least one person getting me a steam game every year at some point <laughs> so that's how it's been if it's not hat in years. time this year you have disappointed me whoever that is this unrelated relative of dollar luigi that i know nothing of who said it was a relative <laughs> so i just assumed yeah. i think the, the first i think you were the first person to actually gift me anything on steam <laughs> yeah and you ended up hating it it was sonic cd well, I don't exactly hate it, but it's one of my least favorite Sonic games. That means you hate it. Because with Sonic, I, you either love it or hate it. I mean, I don't regret playing it. I'm glad that I own it. And... <laughs> to be no. fair, it's also the least played Sonic game in my library, and that includes Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, which, oh my god. I also have it Sonic wasn't that 1, bad 2, at the beginning, 3. but once I got to the later half of the hero story, I just decided, oh my god, this game! 
I made sure to get this Sonic This is so one, two, broken! The physics are awful! Yeah. I made sure to get Sonic 1, When they two, work, they're three, nice, so but like when they don't... Oh my god. Pyramid since this, since the Steam Workshop works with ROM hacks, so I can try them out later. The Scream by Ninate Hollows. I should probably clarify that I don't hate Sonic Adventure 2 Battle. I've not even played the whole game, I'm just mostly through the hero story. But when but the elements of that game that don't work, they really do not work. And that's beyond just the alternative gameplays. Oh, oh they're in a leaf. You know, because, like, it. even Sonic stages. In Pyramid Cave, I had so much trouble with that stage because Sonic kept clipping onto things he obviously shouldn't. <sighs> he could get stuck on the curved slopes, and he's just, it's just like, I've never had that problem in a Sonic game before. Generations didn't give me that shit. Colors didn't give me that shit. Hell, even Sonic and the Secret fucking Rings didn't give me that shit. And it's probably because that game is completely railroaded. But at the same time, good lord. I've never had so much of a physics problem in a Sonic game. And it's a Sonic game, so physics are kind of important. Yeah. You know, one thing I've been wondering for a while is about the Sonic games on Steam. Why is it that Sonic CD gets the Christian Whitehead remake? But we just get the Genesis versions for 1, 2, and 3. Did Christian at Whitehead ever do a remake for Sonic 3? Um, I don't think one was actually... I think he worked on one for Sonic 3 and Knuckles, but it wasn't released. But it would be nice if we could have had the Sonic 1 and 2 remakes on there. Because, like, the Sonic 2 one had Hidden Palace. I mean, of course I could get it in with Steam Workshop, I think. But still... <laughs> Yeah, I'm personally fine with Sonic Mania, to be honest. Yeah. Still waiting for some more, um, for, um, some more interesting Sonic Mania mods. Because, like, um, there are at least a couple of teams working on full games like that. Oh, just wait until the Sonic hacking contest this year. <laughs> That's right, they do those every year, don't they? Yep. And Sega kind of encourages these, don't they? <laughs> well, they certainly don't take them down as rapidly as Nintendo does. I mean, they made it clear that they don't really care that fans make these things. <laughs> what was it? The Sonic the Hedgehog YouTube channel, in the comment section of a YouTube video for, like, a fan game, um, they were actually, they actually roasted Nintendo with this comment. They said, BRB, D <laughs> BRB, DMCA time. <laughs> Just kidding, keep making great stuff, Sonic fans. That was a tweet, not a comment from what I remember, but yeah. I'm pretty sure it was a... Pretty sure I saw... I thought it was a screenshot of a comment. That's what I remember, at least. I remember this tweet showing up on my timeline, and I laughed. Cloudy yeah, Climb by fun. Wild Wes. <laughs> you know, Speaking we should of make Wild an SMBX episode really... together. And it will last for, like, a couple episodes, because we'll get bored. <laughs> and lose all motivation to work on it. <laughs> yeah. But speaking of Wild West, I am I'm di If there's anything in Sonic Mania that I'm disappointed by, is that Act 1 of Mirage Saloon, with any character except Knuckles, is just Sky Chase. Like, they couldn't yeah, have done that in one of the returning zones? <laughs> like, Oil Ocean? Yeah, but no, yeah, but why do they even need to bother doing it anyways? Sky Ch I don't think anybody I think likes it's Sky kind Chase. of obligatory that any 2D Sonic game has some kind of Sky Chase these days. Because there was one in Sonic 4 Episode 2. There was oh, one God. in some other project, I don't remember. There was one in Sonic Unleashed. There were two in Sonic Unleashed, actually. You know, I mean, it's not in every Sonic actually... game, but it's kind of a staple. Has anyone actually tried to mod Sonic 4 to make it actually playable? <laughs> I want to know if somebody's working on porting the Sonic 4 stages to Sonic Mania. That's what I want to know. Like, like, like port the aesthetics and make the stages unless... actually fun. I'm not going to play Sonic 4 unless it's made actually playable in some form. <laughs> well, to be fair, the original games aren't awful. It's just that the controls are definitely not yeah. what you'd expect for a 2D Sonic game. Which is what makes me think Sega would be is kind of sitting on a gold mine with a number of things, but especially if they just gave Christian Whitehead and the rest of the team just make Mania 2 with the Sonic 4 zones 
and make it good. Yeah. Like, honestly, I'd buy that. Yeah, I just like a new game made by the same team. I think that would be pretty uh, cool. And I missed a jump. So far, I've only died as Link. I think the wheel decide has a real vendetta against me for some reason. Maybe it's because of that time where I just... It was something related to Atlas, and I was, like, r using Wheel at the side to determine whether he was innocent in something or not. And I kept just re-rolling, re-rolling, re-rolling until I caught, until I caught, like, a 1 in 15 chance of it actually picking him. Although Wheel the side really shouldn't care what shenanigans I get up to with my so-called friends. <laughs> He doesn't watch my live streams, does he? I don't think he does. Well, don't tell him about that I said that, okay? I'll probably forget anyways. Yeah, anyway, what was that about Sonic 4 versus Sonic Mania? Porting the Sonic four levels of Sonic Mania to make them good. Yeah, something like that. Because <laughs> we'd also then get remixes of the Sonic 4 music, which... I'd like the Sonic 4 music more if the instrumentation wasn't awful. Because, like, the oil... For example, Oil Desert, I think the melody is actually really good. It's the instrumentation that sounds like dying cats that's the problem. <laughs> Or was it Dying Ducks? I think Sonic 4 Episode 2 has both. Which has a worse soundtrack, Sonic 4 or Yoshi's New Island? That's a damn good question. I haven't played that far in New Island, so I can't really say how bad every track is, but like, there are some tracks that are actually tolerable, at least. Egg Factory by Halle Babica. Yeah, isn't Yoshi's New Island just infested with kazoos? Like, there, I believe that, I believe a lot of songs on the soundtrack have kazoos. Alright, so I'm gonna make an exception to my character switching rule whenever there's a character block in a stage. And yeah. speaking of soundtracks, this, this one, uh, Super Mario Bros. 2 Insomniac by Overclocked Remix, it's one of the best freaking pieces of music I've ever heard in terms yeah. of Mario soundtrack remixes, which is just like, and I've heard it in a lot of places, it's a really good track. I just, have to, I just have to sing praises for how good it is, because it really is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I found a glitch! Sucks to be you, ninja. Ninji. Whatever those things are called. I think in Super Mario World they're called ninjis, but in SMB2 they're called something else. Just listen to me too is weird like that. Uh, I used to be pretty knowledgeable about the names of like Mario enemies, but I'd like to say I'm decently knowledgeable. Them. Like I know the difference between a Goomba and a Galoomba, but yeah, mm. the Galoombas are the they're the round ones, ones from Mario, Mario World. World. Yeah, um, I it know didn't officially of the... get a name until 3D World. I know a few of the enemy names from Sunshine. <laughs> That I don't know, because um, I don't memorize shit for games I don't care about. The um, the ones that are kind of like Goombas, those are called Stroll and Stews. I'm not I sure I thought they were Strutt and Stews. That's the one exception. Nah. <laughs> oh, well. But yeah, we like the Sunshine Stew, exclusive right? enemies, I do not know the names of. Ow. The lag is murdering me. Yeah. You know, it would be nice if su if we got another game in the style of Sunshine. Like, you know. I would have been perfectly fine if there was a capture in Super Mario Odyssey that just replicated the mechanics of Flood. I would have been perfectly happy with that. Yeah. <laughs> but we didn't get one. We just got the Sunshine outfit, which I'll admit is nice. Because, like, I think it would be nice to have another game in the Sunshine style, even, and you know, with less of the glitches, too. <laughs> 
I don't remember, I mean, it's, it is a little bit buggy, but I remember Sunshine just more for having a very terrible post-game. I don't remember having too much of an issue with it, but um, like any 3D Mario game, some of the missions were pretty dangerous. Sunshine is definitely the biggest bitch to 100%. And this is coming from somebody who's not actually done it, but has bothered with all the green stars in Galaxy 2. Yeah. Although I think those, I think that one last mission in Galaxy 2... I and, still haven't uh, beaten it. I don't know if I give a shit because it's the case with 3D Land, 3D World, and, and I think um, there was some other the, Mario... Oh yeah, it was World 9-7 in New Super Mario Bros. Wii. And, um, and the boss rush um, where you can't get hurt once in Galaxy 2, that one was pretty annoying. Or was that one under a time limit? I can't. That remember. was a. I think that was a time limit. It was battle belt. Still, that time where limit. It was just fighting time... enemies. I think. For, to be honest, I thought that time limit was bullshit. Gave me a bloody nose. <laughs> Did it now? <laughs> yeah, I got so frustrated. <laughs> you got a bloody nose from Boss Blitz Galaxy, but not Sonic and the Secret Rings. Um, I never actually made it that far in Sonic and the Secret Rings, if I'm honest. Oh, so you never I, realized how crap the controls are. Because, like, I think I never made it that far past Levitated Ruins. Which I'm assuming is the first zone in the game. No. The first zone is more, I don't know, Arabian-themed? Well, isn't it all Arabian-themed? Yeah, it's like... I'm not really it's based sure on a story it. from the Arabian Nights, so... Oh, well. <laughs> Which I have to say, out of all the things in the Secret Rings, the presentation is decent. I'm a little stilted if you ask me, but still. I haven't played That's the only thing so I can really sing really praises about anything. for that game. Um, when it comes to 3D Mario games, I've 100% Super Mario 64 DS. Never the original, because fuck Hazy Maze Cave. <laughs> <laughs> and Rainbow Ride in that version. Dia's version gave me a Luigi, gave me Luigi, so I could yeah. Through everything. <laughs> <laughs> I was I was questioning internally whether or not that was better or worse than having done the original. But yes, with Luigi, the DS version is technically superior. <laughs> God, I loved having Luigi in that. <laughs> and then I've done Sunshine like three times. Oh God, a hundred percent. Yeah. Oh my god! I, I only know four. one other man that insane. I was aiming and his for a name fourth, is but... some call me Johnny. <laughs> I was aiming for a fourth, but uh, my but the desk isn't really working anymore. So anyway, the game wants I... me to keep playing as Peach. So keep playing as Peach in Simplicity by Dark Lord Kynar. I shall. <laughs> And then I, I've done Galaxy once. Um, it's that, that is, if you count 120 stars as Mario and Luigi, 100%. I call that 200% because you're basically playing the same game twice. <laughs> yeah, just the second time, it's with Luigi. <laughs> Although, like, sometimes I wish my disc slot worked because sometimes I really want to play the Galaxy games again. <laughs> and then Yeah, isn't course, your Wii, like, Dogs totally too. busted beyond belief? Yeah, SD card slots fucked up. We can't read discs anymore. Been that way since before I started making game reviews on my YouTube channel. <laughs> Wonder if you'd and be able to somehow get homebrew on it and just load everything through a USB thumbstick. Yeah, Although knowing your luck, the I USB get... ports are also busted. <laughs> the USB ports work, but the... as far as I can tell, you can't get homebrew on it through the USB. I've tried. <laughs> the only way that I know actually works is the SD card slot, but I can't do that. <laughs> yeah, because, like, the method I used when it, back when I tried to do it and then found out I couldn't really get anywhere, uh, I just... I just used Super Smash Brothers. Like, I, like I went out and bought Brawl kind of specifically just to try out homebrew because I was sick of having to try to unlock everything in Mario Kart Wii because unlocking stuff in that game is bullshit. Yeah. So I like, like one night I was just like, hey, I want to go get Brawl. And then like later that week, I was just like, hey, I found an SD card. Let's put let's put homebrew on it. And then I used the custom stage loader trick to get the to get homebrew on it. 
Yeah. And then I did practically nothing with it, and I eventually uninstalled it because I had to migrate my system to the Wii U anyway. I could probably yeah, try it now, that there'd be no loss in hacking my Wii, but... Yeah. Um, I, I've hacked my 3DS a few times, but the thing is, the times I hacked it, there wasn't a whole lot of actually interesting content. Yeah, back when Ninja Cube was the best way to get gain access to your 3DS. I did it through um, the internet browser hack that used to work, and then there was the one that worked with Nintendo 3DS sound. But those have been patched out, as far as I can tell. I think there's still a hardware level trick that you can do that, that couldn't be fixed via a software patch. Yeah, the only thing... That, that doesn't I, work on a new 3DS from what I understand, but... The yeah. only thing I'd kind of be interested in doing is, like, getting some um, Ace Attorney game that hasn't been localized. Uh, and so use homebrews. Well, no, I'm talking about actually getting a cartridge or finding some way to actually buy the game. Oh, so just... Then, so just you want to remove the use, regional locking. Yeah. I thought it wasn't region locked, though. And, and then I also have to apply... It, it depends on the games. And then apply a patch, and then I have to, and I have to homebrew to apply a patch anyway, so because it's in Japanese. But yeah. all of this uh, just to play an Ace Attorney game, huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, I have to laugh. I know, like it's a 3DS game, so of course there, are, of course there are more hoops to go through. It's not like um, Ace Attorney Investigations 2, which was a DS game. It was pretty easy to get. <laughs> it was pretty easy to patch that one. Yeah. It was it was pretty trivial to get into Nintendo handhelds up until the 3DS. Yeah, and now it's a pain in the ass. <laughs> um, yeah, but I now that the system's the almost dead, I think Nintendo's lock. gonna stop giving a shit. What I understand about the 3DS region lock is it depends on the games. Um, I'm not I sure how it works with 3DS Why cartridges it be universal? exactly. But, did, did they um, need to pay extra money to Nintendo to get regional locking? It doesn't make any sense. Like, Here's the thing about region lock. Like, I know the I know the 3DS and Wii U had had it in some form, because you know Nintendo got requests to remove the region lock, which they did on the Switch. That's but, what um, I'm thinking of. They removed it on the Switch, and that was a big deal. But um, from what I know, with DS games, there is no region lock unless it's like a DSi enhanced game, meaning there are more features on the game if you put it in a DSi. <laughs> <laughs> Kelly's gonna be sick if she stays here too long. Yeah, that's that's for your lame joke earlier, Kelly. But back on the topic of 100% in games, you know, 3D Mario's, the last one I 100% was 3D Land. Oh. That final level was a pain. <laughs> I can imagine. I still have not bothered. Mainly because I don't play 3D Land anymore, just because 3D World's that much better. Yeah. Although, I, I hear a lot of people say they like 3D Land more. And then, of course, I haven't done 3D World because I never owned a Wii U. <laughs> it is of and my then, personal opinion that 3D World is the much better experience, but I can understand some people liking the more condensed level design of 3D Land and the mechanics that didn't make it to 3D World. Yeah, and then, um, of course, I haven't played Odyssey because I don't have a Switch either. <laughs> Odyssey, yes, I freaking yeah, love that main theme. Even if you don't own the Switch, you should listen to that theme. Yeah. Um, most of the games I've actually completed 100% are visual novels. You are free <laughs> to be disappointed in me. You are free to be disappointed in me. <laughs> To be fair, some of I'm them sorry. Actually, I'm sorry. To be but... fair, some of them God. actually have a lot of shit to go through. Yeah, do don't do some you of the. That... Do you there was an SUB Academy? series I watched. I think it was Hun Hoonie Pop. Oh God. I I watched it because I was bored, and I watched a ton of other SUB stuff. So I was just like, I wonder how they'll tackle this freaking visual novel that I've never seen. That's a porn game. Elliot turned into a freaking weeb. <laughs> oh god. Anyway. I will admit I will I will admit 
like, at least a few visual novels I've played are in SFW, but I try to avoid that stuff for the most part because I'm not really into that kind of stuff. Anyway, back to what I was mentioning Honey Hoonie Pop for. It was because... Because I remember specifically Elliot mentioning certain things. Like, to unlock this cat girl, you had to do this very specific thing in the park and then come back later. And I was just... And John was just like, what, what the fuck? I think was literally his response to that. <laughs> yeah, visual novels can be pretty weird in ways that you trigger events. <laughs> yeah, kind of like Mario Kart Wii! <laughs> <laughs> to bring that conversation full circle. <laughs> uh, yeah, the Mario Kart that's everybody's favorite, but I never Except for it. mine, and people who have taste! I never owned it, and I only played it a few times. Real men like Double Dash. <laughs> yes, exactly! <laughs> and for the record, it's not because I exclusively used the bullshit motion controls. I had a classic controller for that game, and I still thought it was terrible. At least relative to how terrible a Mario Kart game can be, mind you. But the controls are so stiff, and whenever you get hit, it takes you out for a solid three seconds. It's absurd! You slip on a banana peel and you come to an almost dead stop. That's not how it's supposed to be. Double Dash had it right. What the fuck went wrong? Okay, I don't I don't remember if I read the name of this level. Shy Guy's Toy Box by Saromem. Apologies for following up that rant with that... <sighs> Sorry, Saromem. I'm a terrible person and I should feel terrible. Farron Woods by Davenport. This is a Link level, so we're going to switch back to him. And I don't mean him from the Powerpuff Girls. That might have actually been interesting. <laughs> yeah. I actually did watch a little bit of the original Powerpuff Girls when it was on Netflix. I don't know if it still is. I was never allowed to watch the Powerpuff Girls. There were so many shows I was never allowed to watch kid. So, like, a lot of shows that everybody else fondly remembers, I know next to nothing about because I wasn't allowed to watch them. Yeah, Powerpuff and... Girls got really violent. I do not remember it getting so violent, but, And, yeah. um, one of the shows I wasn't allowed to watch was that Ed and Eddie. I think I remember getting complaints from my grandma back when I was a kid and wanted to watch that show. Like, you really want to watch a show like that? And I think it was mainly the art style that put her off. And my grandma's cool nowadays, so I guess I don't really have much of a complaint, but... <laughs> At one point, I wasn't even allowed to watch Spongebob, because... <laughs> when Oscar Spongebob?! Was, a... because when... was this before the... or after it got bad? This was its early days, although, admittedly, Spongebob is pretty good these days. It, it had a rut from, like, season 5 to season 8? Although, I, I thought those... It was really bad? Honest, I never really thought those episodes were that bad. I will admit the earlier episodes were the best, though. Um, but what, the thing is, when Austin was a kid, he... My parents let him watch it, and he said it's gross cause he pisses, because he picks his nose. And then after that, neither of us were allowed to watch it. <laughs> really now? Yeah. Over time... My parents stopped giving a shit. Um, I wasn't allowed to watch Fairly Odd Parents either. But, um, but you want to know how I was able to get to watch it? Oh no, one here day, comes the story. <laughs> so one day, I'm at a store with my aunt, Whoa, and I got a lot of hype from that. She and we're going through VHS tapes, and she lets me pick one out, and I find one for Fairly Odd Parents, and I believe this one was full of superhero episodes. And I brought that home, and my mom wasn't thrilled to find out that I brought home a fairly odd parents VHS tape. <laughs> but one By of the first things I did episode. Did you do you mean one of the Crimson Chin episodes or Channel Chasers? Um, it was like I don't think Channel Chasers was out yet, but it was like superhero episodes of the series. There was like a superhero conve uh, convention. Oh, so, so basically, Crimson and Chin. There were and, episodes uh, with Crimson. There were episodes with Crimson Chin. And that other um, cat guy. And I, I think, and then some Catman episodes, I believe. Wow, I'm getting in. <laughs> like, do you see what's happening here? I'm, I'm turning into a fairy, jumping on the spring, and then I'm getting absurd height. <laughs> I'm trying to replicate oh, it now. Yeah, that is pretty weird. <laughs> oh, 
Okay, well, I'm apparently not able to replicate it. Not that I need it, but... That was a little wonky. It reminds me of various glitches in Terraria involving momentum that aren't hoiks. I think one of my favorite things to do with the hook shot in Terraria, no lie, is to just hook myself to a door and then send myself flying. Because if you open a door that you're hooked to, you go flying in the direction the door opens. Gosh, I have so many games in my libraries that I have yet to play or I haven't played much of. I have a few in my Steam library that I haven't played. There are several games I have on Steam that I really need to get around to playing. and I think a lot of them were from, like, giveaways or some were gifts. Mario's Dreamland by Ratty524. I don't know why Kirby is so heavily associated for the Game Boy games, but... Oh yeah, I um, I think I used that tile set. Like, I took it straight from this episode for w one of my episodes. <laughs> Wait, I thought you said you didn't ever play this one. Uh, I didn't say I'd never played it, I said it's been a while. I did say I'm not very familiar with the lore. Although I never, th I don't think I made it this far in. in, in uh, I don't think I made it that far in, but I did go through the game's files. Oh, of course, you're one of those types who just peruse the level. Fi okay, you know what? I can't really say it like that because I've done that exact same thing with Tower of Bias because actually playing the game as it's meant to be played is <sighs> just don't the don't level, do that. Oh, Download oh. Tower of Tower of Bias and use the level editors to play the levels you want. Yeah, the levels are pretty bad. <laughs> Even the levels they say are good, they can be pretty bad. <laughs> Especially since they like to put all the bullshit ones right at the beginning of the game. Yeah. And they do it because they sort it by rank, but... <sighs> that's nonsense. Yeah, and some people will purposely make bad levels for it. That reminds me, there was one that I was going to submit to a Tower of Bias game. I think it was called Every SMBX Level Developer is 15% Sadist. And the joke in that title is that Sadist takes up 50% of the name. Yeah. But yeah, that level never never ended up getting done. Like, I, like well, it yeah, was one I of those multi-star... It was, it was a multi-star level... It, didn't I? That, you uh, like, you had to go through five... four different sections to unlock a final, a final boss fight. So, yeah, you had like, yeah, you said there were like five stars in it. And I said that there was a star limit and you're like, guess I'm not doing that. <laughs> I don't remember that. It there are definitely like, levels in the Tower of Bias series that have more than one star, but. Well, at that point, in t well, it was at that point in time, their latest competition, they were only allowing two. Anyway, that level ended up, never ended up getting more than two stars, so... I guess ultimately it didn't matter, but... I've thought about making another level for another competition one of these days, but I don't know. I was going to make a level for... Castle's Masterpieces 2. But, like, I, I missed the deadline, and I was just like... Oh, I really yeah. want to make a level, but I probably won't. I don't even know if that game has come out yet. <laughs> I haven't really been paying attention to anything on the RMM page. Yeah. Okay, I need to make an exception for Water Temple by Deck Killer and Isriari. I've tried playing this level with Link before, and there's a part where you need to jump up and hit a switch, and Link cannot hit it, because he cannot pick up the bricks that you are supposed to use to hit it. So I'm going to switch what? to Luigi. You know, sometimes I wonder why most of what I play on Steam is visual novels. Probably because a lot of them are free. 
Mm, that is true, but there are a few I paid for. I feel sorry for you. Hey, I actually like visual novels. A lot of them told some good stories. <laughs> and some of the anime I've watched are adapted from some visual novels. That sounds pretty crazy to me. <laughs> but, I guess, I guess if you do... I mean, not to diss too hard on visual novels, it's just... The concept of a visual novel just yeah. is kind of an anomaly to me. I don't get it. I mean, like, a lot of what I do... A lot of what I've been playing doesn't really have a whole lot of gameplay, but, you know, some of the more major ones have a bit more, like, Danganronpa, Ace Attorney. Because, like, they throw in little mini-games every now and then. Um, although... I would count Professor Layton as a visual novel series, but I think I think it could also be considered a point-and-click adventure series. Um, Hotel Dusk, that's a good one. Although it actually it actually has like 3D investigation segments. So, um, so yeah, um, exploring is a big part of Hotel Dusk, which is um, actually one of the more well, the few people that did play it actually liked it, but the thing is, the sequel only released in... Because, uh, like, but the thing is, hardly anybody bought it. The sequel released in Japan and Europe never came to the States because the company that made the games went bankrupt. Now, Nintendo... Now, if there's going to be another game, it's up to Nintendo, but they seem to be playing it safe. While I would like another game, it's probably for the best they don't, because... I highly doubt anyone would buy it. At least not that many people. What I'm curious about is if it's if it's released for sale in Europe, that means it must have had an English translation, so it, it what's did. so what's stopping them from releasing it in America? I have no idea. I guess they went bankrupt before they could put out the US version. Oh boy. I just oh, I always forget about this. You need to cross these invisible blocks, and oh god, I invisible already lowered the water level, so now I have to go back, raise it back up, and then lower it again because it needs to be lowered in order for me to get to a different area. And yes, it's using the water temple music from uh, from Ocarina of Time. I don't know how bad the water dungeon is in Ocarina of Time because I didn't make it that far, but. If this stage is anything to go by, I do not want to bother playing any more of Ocarina of Time. <laughs> I think I made it past the second dungeon and I was just like, I'm done with this. Legend of Zelda games, I I won't lie, I'm not too crazy about them. <laughs> I was much mostly more into be, Breath of the Wild, to be honest. Mostly because it's e pretty easy to get lost and I'm not really... A big fan of games that are like not very clear on what I to do. I had trouble getting to fucking Hyrule Castle. To be to be fair, it was my own dumbass fault. But I did not realize you could climb the vines in the area well, leading up to the castle where you're supposed to not be caught by the guards. I will say one thing. I, I would think blame the Nintendo. Didn't I hit that switch? I would blame the N64's terrible graphics for me thinking that I couldn't climb that wall, but I'm not that petty, and uh, it's just, uh. Yeah. One thing I one thing I do want to say about The Legend of Zelda is I think there's a huge difference between holding the player's hand and being clear on what to do, and Legend of Zelda d obviously does neither of those. Like, I've had games that are clear on what to do, but I never felt like they were hand-holding at all. Because, like, what I consider hand-holding is literally giving you the answer, of which um, Ace Attorney 5 does at least a few times, which is ridiculous. Did I need to lower this water? I'm trying all to I can say is thank god uh, that Earthbound isn't that cryptic. Because, like, it's usually pretty obvious what I have to do, and... And if, and if I don't know what I'm supposed to do, it usually doesn't take that long for me to figure it out. In a Legend of Zelda game, it takes me hours to figure it out without a guide. If I've never played the game before. Um, 
The, the Legend of Zelda game I'm most familiar with is Link's Awakening. All the so other I bet you're glad like... that's getting a port to the Switch. <laughs> By the way, this I is mean, the Switch I was talking about. You can't hit this thing if you're Link. Because, like... I think it's... I think it's interesting that it's getting a Switch port, but I'm not sure if I really care that much. Because, again, not a big Legend of Zelda fan. <laughs> Well, somebody who wasn't big on Zelda, and really I'm not, I'm still not that big of a Zelda buff, even though I have played Breath of the Wild and kind of enjoy it. Yeah, I'm considering At least a bit more than I did Wild, Ocarina of Time. Especially but... after hearing that people that aren't crazy about the series actually like that one. But who knows, I could play it and hate it. And then everyone would be mad at me. <laughs> Okay, the one nice thing about this level is that it's is that the checkpoint is right before the boss. Uh, yeah, that's always nice. Who likes to fire freaking potatoes at you? And this guy is super easy to cheese if you're a Link, but if you're any other character, then you have to rely on on the Koopas. Ow! Come on, dude, that wasn't nice. I freaking bounced on your skull and you hit me with a potato. Oh. Well, that was a win. <laughs> by the way, that painting just says World Gallery by Halle Babka. If anyone was wondering when I beat the last boss, it's really nothing special. And by the way, these star keys that I'm getting are unlocking areas in the hub world. Like, you can't unlock the next gallery until you get the previous gallery's key. But they also unlock, yeah. like, power a power-up area. Which I guess I can show. 